They negotiated. And then they negotiated some more. Eurozone finance ministers spent a total of 18 hours talking. In the end, they agreed to this. We have agreed to enhance the role of the SM to further strengthen the crisis prevention and resolution capabilities of the euro area. We will also increase the, effectiv the effectiveness of ESM precautionary instruments. At the same time, we reaffirm that uh, ESM support is a last resort and that we need to ensure an appropriate level of conditionality. In other words, more support for struggling Eurozone economies. But the help comes with strings attached. There was far less consensus on other issues, though, like the proposal for a joint Eurozone budget and a plan to secure all Eurozone bank deposits. Also looming over the meeting, uncertainty over Italy's spending plans. The country is currently revising its draft budget after the EU threatened to fine it for violating fiscal rules. Italy's public debt now stands at more than 130% of GDP. That's more than double of what's allowed under EU rules. Another thing that will need to be talked about. Let's go over to DW's Georg Matters, who's standing by in Brussels for us. Georg, hours and hours of negotiations there, but um, not really much of a result, wouldn't you say? Ben, I just followed the joint press conference of Bruno Le Maire, the French finance minister and his German counterpart, um, Olaf Scholz. And I have to say, for finance ministers, they were not just upbeat, they were uh, positively ecstatic about what has been achieved, speaking about giant leaps forward uh, that were made. And to understand that, you have to see where they come from. Uh, many ideas were thought to be dead in the water, and now they are back on the table. Um, uh, less ambitious, maybe, but uh, take the European stability mechanism, for instance, it has new responsibilities. The firefighters, as both ministers explained it, have a better toolbox to fight a potential debt crisis. And from their perspective, it's positive news for the Eurozone. Well, as you put it, they're ecstatic, but that's probably because of lack of sleep. And there are lots of sticking points, uh, like the common Eurozone budget, for example. Right. I think we're looking at a scaled down version of, of what Macron had in mind when he talked about a crisis fighting a budget. But what we have is a Eurozone budget uh, that is, has been agreed, at least uh, how it's to, uh, to be constructed. What has not been agreed is how big that Eurozone budget uh, will be. And the same goes for the digital tax. Many said something that is dead in the water. It's now uh, back and it will focus on advertising revenues. So it will hit a uh, big tech giants in the future, although ministers have agreed that they first want to see how international organizations would pick up that idea. But if that doesn't work in the OECD or the G20, it is the Eurozone that will push this forward. Really briefly, did they get to the topic of Italy? Um, I, I asked that question to Scholz and he said, the German finance minister, and he said Italy has been extremely constructive. But they, he then made also clear there is no trade-off between Italy supporting these reform ideas and Italy handing in a new budget. Uh, the position in Brussels is still clear. In, Italy has to hand in a revised budget. Otherwise, they are potentially facing penalties from Brussels. Georg Matters in Brussels. Thank you.